22 men ready to do battle. It's time to dance, and we are underway from Atlanta. This is taken just shy of the 10, and the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. And you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes? I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43-6 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. And his first pass is incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. He'll drop to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So now an early third and 10 here on their opening drive. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Five yards, and that means they come up short as they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out. Hope you get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop it well short. On fourth down, Bradley Pinion on to punt for the Falcons. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. Derek Carr. It's been fun to watch his development through the years, and right now what you see is a very confident quarterback who has a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. From nearby North Cross, Georgia, it's Alvin Kamara. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Throwing now is Carr. And that one complete downfield to Johnson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers will get involved as this game goes on. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Now Carr. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. 
Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Carr going to throw. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. Avery Williams deep for Atlanta. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Paulson Adebo. And the Saints are going to take possession of the football. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now after the INT, it's Carr. The pass caught by Alave. And he's gonna be marked down just outside the 10. Second down at four. Kamara up the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. the two. Here's first and goal. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. From back at the four, here's second and goal. They run it again with Kamara. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. 
Here's Carr. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Juwan Johnson, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Takes it at the seven. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Hadn't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first-round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there. No hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried running through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. So from the 36 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to bring up second down. Looking to throw. This one complete to Scott Miller. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 22-yard line. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time when nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. Check, check right. Yellow, 
He's going to keep this again. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there. Worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it. Most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. A five-yard touchdown. And the Falcons are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And the end result in Atlanta touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The New Orleans offense set to take over. The football changing hands here, and as this offense takes a field, Charles, they'd be fine with more of the same on this upcoming drive. Last time out, they found the end zone for six. And they're certainly hoping for more of the same, but the game plan, I doubt it'll just be a carbon copy of the last drive because I think this offense is ready to break out some new wrinkles and try some new things that might be hidden in their playbook. They want to use that confidence to its advantage while also keeping the defense from anticipating what's up next. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field. And that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Here's Carr to throw. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The Saints passing game in sync and moving the football. It's a first down. Now Carr. Alvin Kamara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Again, it's Carr. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. 
And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Carr, incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. The game clock setting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. On second down, Camara. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Carr. And that is incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Now Will Lutz, who went to college, a stone's throw from here at Georgia State, comes on for the field goal attempt. The kick by Lutz is good, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And not that the coach asked me, but I do like the call there to start the drive, looking for something maybe to jumpstart this offense. And they decide to run a little screenplay, maybe give their running back a little bit of space. Mission accomplished. He turns that into good yardage and a quick first down. They'll drop to throw. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. third and short they'll try and pick it up through the air and an incomplete pass that'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one 
The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. And this ball is going to be down now right at the 10-yard line. Good spot. Absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows the punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Well, the Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there. That can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Carr now to throw. And Thomas has it. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second down at five. To throw his car. He gets this one to Johnson. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, it's Carr. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. It's game time. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Four seconds, all that remain here this first half as the kick gets away. This is taken just shy of the 10. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Saints. And their passing game has been the reason why they lead thus far. They've had great success moving the ball through two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, they were on the other end of the spectrum in terms of passing efficiency. That's going to need to improve in the second half to come. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. Taken from about the 12. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Saints set to go here to begin the third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. On third down, here's Kamara. Bulldozes past him, and he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Kamara. A beautiful fake. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 45 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now they'll throw with Carr. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked by Jeff Akuda. And the Falcons are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. That is a tough way to start the third quarter. You get the football open to drive it down, put it in the end zone, and take the lead. Instead, they give him the football. And I think the key here is for them to not get discouraged. That is not how they drew it up, not how they saw it in their mind. But there's a long way to go in this game. You know, they've just got to find a way to come back one play at a time. Yes, it's a cliche, but they can get it done. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons' offense now. And their defense did its job, forcing the takeaway there to start the half, and now can the offense follow suit? And you'd better believe that one side of the ball feeds off the work of the other, so they'll want to come out, establish some rhythm, and go down and take the lead. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Ritter on target to Pitts for a Falcon first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. 
If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They go play action here on first down. This went into the hands of Pitts. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 64 yards. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. Back to throw here. And he'll just get rid of it. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Robinson. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I thought they were on to something with their play call and kind of went in reverse a little bit, threw it on first down, then ran it on second down. Not successful either way. What play call do they come up with here on this important third down try? A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. They'll set up a throw. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Falcons are an extra point away from taking the lead. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Coup now for the point after. And this puts him on top by a penny. It's 14-13. A drive that time of six plays. And it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. From the 10. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the Saints coming back out ready to go for this next drive. As this offense takes the field against CD, remember last drive they were moving the football, but then they threw that costly interception. So we'll see if they can right the ship here on this drive. And doesn't that just sum up football? We see it all the time, don't we? The defense goes from losing the battle to making a huge play and stealing the momentum. So you know they're riding high right now, and they're ready to challenge this offense and that quarterback one more time. And we'll see if the offense is up for that challenge here as things start to get more interesting here in this second half. Second and eight coming up. Throwing now is Carr. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Carr going to throw. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. 
And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. And we've got a dandy here, a one-point game as we begin the fourth. There's Robinson showing the flash. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll look to throw here. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Here's second and eight. Escaping the pressure. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Colin Saunders forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. Yeah, some real defensive resistance there, saying not so fast to a good drive. They had marched to the end zone the last time out. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer and a big play here on third and long following the sack. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit 
and take a fourth quarter lead. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. This run defense has been pretty stout all game long. Now you're here in the fourth quarter. Should rely more on the passing attack? I don't think you have any choice, and I don't think you have to dress it up at all either. Throughout the first three quarters, you're still trying to convince the defense that you may run the football. That's out the window right now. Protect, let your quarterback operate, and try and find some targets in the open field downfield. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. This offense so far on third down, they've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Here's Carr. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Coming left is Kamara. They'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 65 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 38. Here's Carr to throw. Got a oh, no, he lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it and not realizing that danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It's caught, Smith. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. 
And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. He'll look to throw. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Now here's the option play going left. 20, 10, and he just falls short down at the one yard line. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and 10. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 27-yard line. A big gain there, and that should certainly be enough to put this one in the win column. And this defense, they needed that one more stop to have any chance, but that completion, that's likely going to seal their fate. And you could hear it in your voice, that one more stop. <laughs> feel their pain. Oh, it was so important. They just didn't get it done. Wow, what a way to finish this one off. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here, and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise.